Gabby Evans has grown up in a sleepy town on the Coromandel coast. She's deaf, so that suited her till now. I can hear like um, loud sounds but not quiet sounds. I mean, I could hear a lawnmower and or an airplane fine without my hearing aid, but it's the quiet sounds that I can't hear. Gabby's the only deaf girl in her community and at her school. Soon, she's moving here. Calston School in Auckland is one of only two schools in New Zealand that caters to deaf students. She's just 13, and she'll be moving hundreds of kilometres from home. I have to learn sign language, which I haven't really used since I was two. And, um, I, I mean, I know I got a lot of people here, and um, I know like every bit of the anger, but it'll be like I have to learn how to get around Auckland, like a whole new way of getting around, including hopping on the bus. And um, I mean, it's going to be quite different for me because, yeah. She gets different from the other kids, but she feels that the other kids also see her as, as being an outsider and as being different. So she's going to go into an environment where there are other kids who are just getting on with it, who are also deaf. And so I hope that she'll be able to let that side of her sort of fears and self-consciousness go and just get on with being Gabby and not being Gabby the deaf girl. So what do we need to mix it with? A knife. A knife. Or maybe even two. Yeah. OK. Then you can go like that. Um, I'll take the good looking knife. Oh, we're going to do it together, OK. Her limited hearing is finely tuned to her mother's voice, but mostly she gets by just lip reading. OK. And then just tip this out into the middle of it. It wasn't clear from the outset that, that Gabby was deaf and she was slow to reach all of her milestones. Right. They did um, a hearing test. I asked them to. I said, I think she can't hear. They said, well, we'll test her. And then they came back and sort of said, oh, <laughs> your daughter's deaf. OK. Can you get me uh, the baking sheet, the one I make shortbread on? Um, I'm asking you to get me the baking sheet. That's the metal thing. Oh, I no, mean well, baking paper. <laughs> no, not baking paper. Well, I used sign language when I was really little, but as the hearing aids got better and, and as I got older and um, my brain got used to actually hearing sound, I began to, like, lose my use of sign language until I, like, I'm now and I don't use sign language anymore. I think they're more tied up to the stereotypes. Maybe because we're in a small town, where deaf people are, are like, they go to special schools only, and that disabled people um, have like, their own communities. And I generally have to prove myself. Everyone in this school was like, um, hearing, except for me. Look at the shoes. We need to figure out the height. When I got this hearing aid a few years ago, I didn't really um, need to put my hand up so much to let the teacher repeat themselves. Wait, well, you guys, you guys, you guys. Is Mr. Ralph on the um, list of suspects? Where's the suspects? Mr. Scott. But, look, he's free Friday. When I was five, I wasn't quite walking that well. As I've gotten older, I've gotten stronger. Wait, no, 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 wait, it's, it's... My balance is OK. I mean, when I was little, it was like you had to be careful, but, um, like, um, if there's a whole crowd of people, I'm fine. But my mum thinks I'm not. I feel protective of Gabby in a physical sense. So, um... 
when she was smaller, I was always conscious of her falling. Because of her cerebral palsy, she, she was prone to falling a lot. And when she was little, she couldn't hold up her own head. Um, and her legs are very stiff. Now she's, she's learned how to, to cope with it. When she goes to the city, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about just really practical things like traffic and crossing the road, not being able to hear what's coming, because we don't have any traffic here to speak of. This is huge in the scale of what Gabby's done until now. I don't think that she realises how big it is. She'll, it'll start to sink in um, when she's packing and getting ready to go. All right, you can go. In Auckland, Gabby will live in a boarding house with other deaf students and communicate using New Zealand Sign Language. Gabby only knows a couple of words, so she's trying to teach herself before the big move. I only know my name. <laughs> if I were to say it, like introducing myself, I would go name, my, and then G, A, B, Y, and that's pretty much all I know. I knew of Kelston School for the Deaf. I've known about that school since I was a kid. Um, I didn't realise that it was an option for Gabby, though. I always um, thought that it was for the profoundly deaf. It can get a little bit confusing, because I do know that when you when you were, like, asking a question, like, we go, like, go open face, like, and they go like in, like it's like an angry face, but it's like but the end. Um, but usually we go like open face. And when, we, when we did go and have a look, uh, we realised that she would not actually be at a school for the deaf. We that she would be at Kelston Girls College, um, under the care of the Deaf Education Centre. I've pretty much grown up like talking orally, and I think. It would be hard to sort of turn off my voice. But um, if I do speak, like, um, like, they'll pretty much be able to lip read, so I think they'll, they might understand a bit, along with, like, this, the signing. And so... Yeah, in order to find her peers, she has to go and, um, and, and meet other people who, who are deaf. You're not really aware of what there is until you get out there and see it. And so I, I, I thought that this move to Auckland could be really good for her. I don't really get homesick, except I miss the dogs, but not all the other animals. She's reached the step of, of knowing that, well, that her mother sucks and <laughs> that, you know, her mother knows nothing about, about life and <laughs> um, everything about what we do is, is, um, is wrong. I think that's, that's a natural way for, for a lot of kids to feel. Um, I really only have two tools. Empty. Well, um, I have do my washing, empty the compost, uh, sometimes helping with the dishes, like drying it, and sometimes have to wash it. What do you reckon is going to be hardest about next year, living away from home? And I won't miss you. You won't miss me? <laughs> this is my mum's lifestyle, but it does really suit me. I don't say that's why I'm looking forward to um, living in Auckland, because everything's so close.
down there, isn't it? Yeah, in there. With Gabby leaving home, I, I think that it's really starting to sink in for her. Probably had more hugs in the past few days than I've had in the past few years. No, that was for something else. <laughs> that was for something else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, I've been waiting to see, to see the reality sort of um, sink in for Gabby, and I think it has now that um, we're sort of here, really. So what do you mean? Well, you weren't very... Um, you weren't very interested in talking about it. You weren't very sort of excited or anything. I was the one that was all nervous yeah. for you. <laughs> you haven't been nervous at all. No, I'm not a nervous person. No. I don't really know much about deaf culture, and so I mean, I'll be experiencing it, but I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. Can you take one more thing? Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome. I've been oral almost all my life. Oh, that one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Here. Yeah, pretty good. Cool. Oh, do you know about this? You know, if you can't hear people knocking at patients. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> do you like the room? Yeah. She wants that room. On the big one. Do you want that room? You don't want the big room? I like that room. Do like this one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. OK. When I saw Gabby, when she first came in, and she's a beautiful young woman, and she was welcomed here in our traditional manner. She had a good look around, and Mum was here with her. And she was looking at Mum, and I was watching how she was lip-reading Mum, very carefully to understand what she was saying. But when I signed her, she didn't have any idea what I was saying. Most of them are like hearing impaired. They come from a mainstream school. They come straight here into a deaf environment and they'll say, well, we, know, we know straight away because um, cause they're standing by themselves. They were sort of trying to encourage them to come in. And I want to introduce you to two students. OK. This is, um, people not tell her your name. My name is L-E-R-O-Y. And my Leroy. sign name is Leroy. Leroy. How do I say sign name? My name. Yeah. My name. Uh, Gabby. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Gabby, her name. Not Jed's sign name. You have sign name? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. What's that? Gabby. Oh, Gabby. And we tell the other students, the older ones too, you know, they're shy. Please teach. And they say, fine. And that sort of gives them a little bit of pride because they like to be the one, you know, the older brother and sister to teach and show them around. Yeah. So Gabby's moved in and I've left her there. Um, yeah, I'm just hoping that she's she's going to be able to communicate with everybody that's the that's the big thing from now on she doesn't um, know sign language and although some of the kids can both sign um, and use speech um, there's also kids there who are profoundly deaf most of the time it's normally the new students we have that have um, homesickness because they're not used to it um, not used to having staff here um, new friends. I'm really proud of her for, you know, 
being willing to, to leave home and to leave everything that she knows. We try and keep them as close as we can to our office so that we can hear them cry and just go on. Can I sort of help with anything? Don't no, put that away. <laughs> We provide a home-like environment here for students, so when they come and stay in the residence, they feel like they're warmly welcome. And it's important that the parents and family feel that they're welcome here as well. so different like, when I first came here I was really shy and then I met them and I'll just <laughs> get along with them like that. Okay. Yeah. 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 I started here since 2009. When I first started here I was like nervous day, missing your family yeah. on your first day. Quite cool meeting de other deaf people. Mm. <laughs> You're like the youngest and mm. I'm not older. Mm. Hey, next year we'll just be up. Me. Mm. Me. Me. Within weeks, Gabby's talking about heading back home. The buildings are very old and they're kind of very echoey, so they sort of amplify the noise. In the classes, everyone's always talking and being really loud. I might go back because it's getting quieter. Yeah. yeah, it's really hard. Everyone's talking over each other and just to be heard and like, they're like making a lot of noise and to all come for each other but they still want to be loud. In the weeks since Gabby moved here, her mother started on a new career path, training as a teacher and moving away from the family home on the Coromandel. For Gabby, it's tough. She's struggling in the classroom where she can't hear the teacher. She's going to have to try really hard to listen to what the teacher is saying to get the, end, uh, the ends of each word. 
the speeches. When the teachers are talking, it's the speech patterns, it's, it's the sounds that are really quiet that she has to listen carefully to. And uh, she didn't really like it. She sat there with her bag in front of her face. And when the teacher called her name out, she just went, yes, miss. And she didn't look at the class. After school, Gabby goes back to the quiet of the boarding house. She can't communicate here, as she still hasn't learned to sign. She's missed several days of school. It has been hard, but um, well, I can't give up, you know, I want to still. I can't give up because mum's got teacher training and she's going all over the place. And so I have to stay here and love you because, I mean, I can't because um, she won't let me give up. Well, at the beginning, she was very homesick, saying she wanted to go home and back to her own school. So the staff and I spent quite a bit of time with her in the second week, saying, you know, it's going to take time. You're going to be fine. I tried to be compassionate and to be sympathetic, but it went on for so long that in the end I, I basically said, look, you know, you, you've promised to do this, you've promised to give it a year, and um, there's nowhere to come home to now. Finally, everything falls into place. My homesickness is improving. Yeah, so I'm getting better. Gabby's sign language skills are improving too. When she gets home, she's absolutely worn out because she spends so much of her time concentrating on signing here to pick it up. I've still got a long way to go. Um, I haven't learned very much. Um, I mean, I've learned some, but I still really can't hold a conversation yet because um, when I do, sometimes people go, I my signs all over the place and stuff. I think her signing is really improving. I could say to her, how was school today? And her reply, instead of being one sign, or two or three signs back. And it's got to the point now where I can tease her a little bit and say, you want to go home? And she says, no, 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 I want to stay. <laughs> Yeah, um, no. The noise is like in the classes I've gotten used to it. Um, well, at first it was like, whoa, this is way noisy then. Well, I get to my old school. Well, I mean, I've gotten used to it. So by comparison, they're probably way quieter. <laughs> And I just love hearing about the people and the things that she's, the people that she's seeing and the things that she's doing um, while she's in Auckland. So that gives us a lot more to talk about. Uh, and it's really broadened. It's broadened both of our worlds. You need my home, right? Oh, okay. yeah. 
Quite often, you'll see that within a matter of weeks, these students, who have grown up speaking and lip reading, are learning how to sign very quickly, mixing with their deaf peers as well. And I think that's great. They can access both worlds, the deaf world and the hearing world. Gabby's celebrating her 14th birthday. Life away from home is really growing on her. I find it cool. I got to learn a whole different culture, another language, and like I've got friends, and um, they accept me for who I am. Hello.